we are in Hurley, which is a gorgeous village just next to the Thames. And I spotted a few days ago this lovely arch between the, the church and that house. Of course, the moment we come down here, there's a Range Rover in the way, but we'll either put it in because that's the truth of the situation, or I'll edit it out. I don't know. But this is the scene. It's quite an overcast day, but the sun keeps coming in and out, so there aren't any strong shadows. But isn't that beautiful? The entire sketch took about 45 minutes. It's all filmed on location. So there are wobbles of the camera as the wind blew. There are interruptions from cars and people. Why not have a go and sketch it in your own style? And if you do and share it online, if you use the hashtag sketch with Liz, I'll get to see it. The reference photo is on the community tab of this YouTube channel. I'm in Hurley and I have come fairly lightly equipped. I've got my concertina book. This is a Hannah Muller. It's watercolour paper, 300 grams, and it's really nice. I've got a very important clip, which just keeps everything in place. Ooh, except, let's get that flat. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a monochrome today because it tends to be quite quick. And I have got my Stable 088 pen, which is water resistant, not waterproof. So if you put the line down and then water on top, it will bleed, but you'll still be able to see the line. You can do tone, line and wash one pen, which is Brill. I've got a water brush. And if you don't know water brushes, you just put water in the handle, squeeze, and the water comes out. So it saves having to carry a pot of water around. And then I've got these Tombow brush pens. It's a selection of greys and they are water blendable. They've got a brush pen at one end and a bullet nib at the other. So you can draw with them and add tone and they blend beautifully with water. There is a blending brush, but I don't tend to use that. I just tend to use water, to be honest. So I'm looking at the scene. I think it's a Norman church looking at the, um, the archways. I'm working out what I want to do and I think because what attracts me is that arch which I can just about see behind the car let's say I may edit the car out I really like the way the the chains the chain and link sort of fence comes up to the church and I love this it almost looks French those houses like a little sort of uh, almost fortified house I'm like, go and poke around properly when I've finished. So I'm wondering about slightly angling things out, the house here and the tower there, so that the focus is on that um, archway. And I don't want the archway across the fold of my paper. So that maybe if I sort of put that there, and leave space for some of these, the fence to come up. I think that would work. So visualizing how it's gonna work before you start is no bad thing. So we've got a smaller, the, the squarer bits of house here, that going right up to, to actually get the whole of that steeple in and the cross on top and the lightning rod. And possibly it's gonna be a bit tricky and then to get the chain fence in because I'd have to have it kind of little which would make that house really tiny. No, I'm, the fence is going to have to go. That's why it's just worth thinking about it before you start because if I have the church that big, the house is only going to be that big anyway and the bit that I like which was that arch, it's going to be that big. So maybe, yeah, I'm going to shift it all over and make that house a little more important. Okay, you see, I've changed my mind, but far better I changed my mind at this point, rather than when I sort of get halfway through the 
uh, sort of getting those large shapes in. I'm going straight in with pen because it makes you far more decisive. You can dither about like a right dithery thing if you use pencil. This actually is a very forgiving pen because if you get the wrong lines in, you can just go back and put the right ones and you can blend out the wrong ones because this will move with the water. So it is far more forgiving than you might anticipate. And um, so what I'm doing is some sort of continuous line work just to get the big shapes in and just to see what's happening here. And when I say it's continuous line, it I am allowed to take my uh, pen off. So it is continuous when it's helpful to me. And if it's not helpful, I take my pen off. But why I like it is it makes my eye really flow round the scene in front of me and look at all elements of it. Okay, so those are the big shapes at the front. Be nice to, to bring this forward. I've got that angle totally wrong. And I'll pretend I did it wrong so that I can show you how I correct it, <laughs> as opposed to sheer incompetence. Hello. That's such a lovely view, isn't it? Isn't it? Just such a shame that the um, car. car is stuck in. It's not your car, is it? I'm just before I'm rude yeah. about it. Yeah, I saw it earlier and I thought, oh, I'll come back and sketch that. We've been down by the lock. Oh, I'll come back and yeah. came back and, of course, the cars there. I'm, like, oh. I'm bringing, I belong to Marlow Arts and Crafts. So ah. bring, I try and choose a venue for Mondays for plein air during the summer. Oh. This is the one. So I'm just coming to make sure the loos are open. Down by the river? Yeah. Yes, they are. Oh, yes. Oh. I can. And the coffee and tea shops open Wednesday to Sunday. Yeah, where I live in Marlow, and we always used to walk along and oh, have but... tea. But since the Wretched Bridge. Yeah, how long has that been closed? Oh, obviously all this year and part of a lot and yeah, yeah. And I really don't know if it's ever going to be uh, mm, ever opened yeah, again. And it's a nuisance and uh, yeah, a friend and I walked we were walking to Henley during oh, it was about February I think. And we had to walk along this way. Yes, there is a diversion, uh, isn't there? But, but it's walking on the roads. Marlow uh, over Marlow Bridge, yeah. It's road. not a it's pleasure. Really horrible. I stand over and take a picture behind you. No, no, no. Not you, no, no, no. Because I might just do that myself. It's so lovely, beautiful. So good choice. <laughs> yes. Well, it is. It's a lovely. Offering. You know this person. It's yes, this is, this is my <laughs> son. He's here. I'm, I'm sort of vaguely filming this, so it's. Uh, Who are you? Yes. So oh, you sorry, may. No, 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 no. You. you, you may well be. Um, Immortalised, who knows? <laughs> I didn't say anything rude, you didn't say anything <laughs> no, rude, no, that's no. fine. Sorry, it's making sure it's in shot. Thank you. No, I, I do stuff for YouTube, you see, oh, and you? Um, while the weather is nice, and I have as well, willing, a willing assistant, assistant. Yes. I have fed Next him. From nowhere, <laughs> I'm almost ready to defend you. Think, oh, oh <laughs> yeah, that's right. But it is a Marlow murder mystery place around here, you know, oh. they do a lot of murder mystery things. Oh, do they? I, I, I. We assume that they must have filmed several Midsummer murders round here, yeah, at have. least. Well, yeah. Oh, I should look for you. So, what YouTube thing? Oh, I'm, I'm Liz. Liz, Liz. Chatterton. C-H-A-D-E-R-T-O-N. Oh, okay, because well, as you say, well, there's problems, whatever. Yes. You can just, I don't know, you can relax into it, don't you? Just, just Absolutely. Like, oh, no, you. not at all. It's nice. Oh, sure Lovely to meet you. <laughs> Bye. So there you go. 
it's not always for the faint-hearted doing this in public. Oh, what am I doing? You didn't get much narration there. I tried to keep going as a... Uh... So I've got the main shapes in. That's what I was trying to do. And now I'm just using that water brush to start adding some tone. And you can see how it starts to have a lot more sort of 3D to it when, when you get going. This was the bit I got wrong, the angle but already it's sort of melting away and we needn't worry about that. This is just, I think, the lightning conductor here. I will put the proper lightning conductor up off, off the top in a moment. Not sure I've made this wide enough, but see, you can just put in some extra lines and it really, on the whole, will not look out of place. So having got those sort of melted some of those lines in. What I could do is use my brush pen, darken where I feel it needs it. So we've got these lovely curves around here. We might, I think it'd be quite nice to get quite a lot of detail on this sort of buttress here in a moment. Those might need darkening. So the more you look, the more you see. So you've got this sort of sticking out and the, the roof coming out here. Oh, I had put that in there. Now I really wish there was a tree or something behind here. There is a tree at the back of the, the church. I might bring it forward a bit because I think that would be rather nice sort of behind the church just to give that feeling and then look you see they blend so beautifully you can and you can block them away and you know do all, all that sort of watercolory stuff if if you want to let's get some quite or some stronger shadow under the eaves darker through that archway because that'll make that stand out um, again, darker under the eaves, a bit darker under those eaves. Love this crooked skyline. Kind of wish maybe I'd emphasise that a bit more. I'm glad I put it up. Sorry, the sun has just come out, so there is some shadow from that tower. I'm going to grab that while I can. So in fact, let's grab all these shadows while the sun's deciding to be out because that really, really will help. So there's a kind of shadow there. See, suddenly that's got a lot more of a shadow on it. This is a wall in front of, so this shadow there. I think that might give a bit of shape. Okay, so that's all my big shapes. And now I can come back in and start to do some detail. So I want darker, this is sort of up in the bell tower here. I, mean, the sort of, I don't know whether it's for ventilation or whether it's... Let's get the clocks in. Or the hands of the clocks, or I should say. We've got some lovely ridges on these on the, the um, steeple. That 
triangle there is quite dark. Oh gosh, that's a winky wonky line. So what I like here is we've got these big blocks that sort of come round and then it's sort of filled in with flint and I think we should try and capture some of those. I don't want to get too detailed because if I have to stop now it'll look very out of place but just to remind me that I want that. It's a nice light just here. It's worth capturing. Some sort of decoration above the door and the door. We've got quite a shadow which I've put in. There's some nice wrought iron work on this door, so let's put that in. There's some sort of planter here that's obscuring that. It's all very messy along here. So it really is a shame that I couldn't put those. Well, look, maybe I can. I'll just move them up a bit. So it was the posts that I really liked with the chain because they are so wonky. They look like they've been hit by many a car. just get this chain working, couldn't we? Up here we've got some sort of recess. I would imagine there used to be a statue in there, probably pre-reformation or something. parasol or something I can see going on behind there. So let's do this window. It's got lots of little glass lights on it and reinforcement as well. So let's put some of that but we don't want it too precise so we can just do, put a bit of that on. It's got some nice carving round but again Probably that's too much detail for this sort of distance. Noticing up here we've got some quite big blocks and then again it goes into this sort of flint and that's all sort of wood up there. And then this has got blocks again. And I've edited out the, the car. It's got sort of climbing roses. Oops. Put in some brickwork and sort of this house is bricks and blocks. So we just get some of that in. It's got definite woodwork here. panes of glass there. These brushes are so good for just adding in 
sort of uh, panes of glass and little windows and the hint of it. And of course I can take a photo and I can always finish this up, off at home if I need to. But having actually started it outside, it's nice if I can finish it outside. So. Another archway through there which is nice because it echoes the archway there and the arch in the church to get some of these sort of blocks here don't really like what I was doing with that foliage there there's sort of grass that comes round in front of the church here that We've sort of put in and then the road comes round there. I think we need a little bit of this TV aerial because I quite like that just because it's so incongruous in this fairly timeless scene and of course I promised to put my lightning conductor up there. I'm starting to hurry because actually I'm getting quite tired having been out sketching for a few hours now and I would imagine everyone else is too. So Let's just capture the most important bits. Just to show that that does go round. And then we could just put a bit of a bush or something there to cover, to finish that off. Stop our eye disappearing. I'm thinking that to, I'm just going to put some ink down here, I'm going to pick it up with my pen and I'm going to splatter to try and get a bit of that sort of um, flint effect going to splat all over my trousers at the same time. So if you put some pen down on a non-absorbent surface you can then pick it up and use it sort of like ink. It's a little bit too pale. So let's just put a larger wash and that's a little bit pale. That will just close that off might just need to balance some of this sort of just something a bit darker over here just to balance up okay i think that is it I also like to sometimes think about what I would do differently and I think if I was doing this again I would probably splay this out rather than having the angles change around that arch. I might have done that a bit differently but for me it's sort of caught the feel of the place so I'm happy enough.